I found 11 side hustles for lazy people or people that just want to do fun stuff and make money from it. And these side hustles don't require a lot of money to start up or a bunch of experience. And you probably never heard of most of these. So if you appreciate me doing all this research and doing videos like this, let me know by gently tapping that like button. And let's jump into it with number one on the list, which is selling game mods. This is basically the art of creating or modifying in-game content. Now, I think this is gonna get absolutely huge with the rise of the metaverse. For instance, there's what's known as game platform companies such as Epic Games, Meta, Microsoft, Nvidia, Roblox, and Tencent. And their intention is to design games that are actually user generated, right? So part of the game is created by the company itself, but many of them are actually designed to be user generated, very similar to Minecraft. And there's gonna be a ton of opportunity with this in the next five to 10 years. But even now with games like Minecraft, there are people making millions of dollars a year. And they're doing it by designing specific Minecraft servers and then selling the access to these servers to people who play Minecraft. And these are known as Minecraft modders and they've made over $350 million. Another video game company called Overwolf has paid out over $29 million to mod and app creators in one year alone. And these are players who create items to buy and sell in game. So I think you see my point here. There is a ton of opportunity here. And if you're someone who loves to play video games anyways, might as well get paid to do it. I'll give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is gonna be similar and that's creating and selling clothing within Roblox. So Roblox, is one of those video games that I mentioned that's doing this. And not only can you create different levels, video game types, and worlds within Roblox, but you can also create weapons and clothing. And you can sell it for cold, hard cash. And there's an article on Business Insider about someone who is making $90,000 a month selling in-game virtual items. And this guy, Jordan, made over $900,000 in a single year. And there was a single Roblox clothing item that sold for 69 million Robux. And at the time, that was equal to about $241,000. One single item sold for $241,000. Crazy. And this is honestly just the beginning. I remember when they made it legal to buy and sell different weapons and different mods within Counter-Strike, and that became an entire cottage industry where people were becoming millionaires. And I think this is gonna start happening with a bunch of different video games out there. So yeah, I'll also give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is a little goofy, but it's astrology reading and guidance. Now you you might think that this one is funny, but there are people who are making millions and millions of dollars a year doing this. And astrology, I'm, I'm not even gonna like define it. I think you know what astrology is, but it basically helps people discover themselves and it involves like different types of signs like Scorpio or Capricorn. And when you give people readings, it kind of helps them to figure out what they're gonna do in life. And according to Glassdoor, astrologers on average make about $49,000 a year. But if you start your own business or do this as a freelancer or a side hustle type of thing, you can make much, much more than that. So yeah, this one's really interesting. You know, a lot of people are into this type of thing. I'll give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score, even though it's not really my cup of tea. The next one on the list is another pretty hilarious one, and that is Dungeon Master. And this is in the game Dungeons and Dragons. And there's actually an article on Bloomberg about how good Dungeon Masters typically charge about $500 per game. And as the Dungeon Master, you're kind of like directing the entire game, basically. What are you doing in our dungeon? It's really hard to explain if you've never played D&D, &D, but a good Dungeon Master Master makes the game much more fun. And according to Glassdoor, Dungeon Masters make about $62,000 a year. So yeah, there is a lot of opportunity with these types of things. If there's a bunch of people that are really obsessed with a game and you can get really good at that game, you can make money as a coach or something like a Dungeon Master. I'll give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next one on the list is going to be selling bonsai trees. And bonsai trees are basically these tiny, exquisitely shaped trees. And there's a lot of people out there who love to nurture and trim these trees because it gives them a deep sense of satisfaction watching their tiny tree grow. And there's a cool YouTube video I saw of this guy named David who basically bought this really bad kind of dilapidated bonsai tree for about $3,000. He nurtured it and now it's worth over 20,000. But yeah, you can buy certain types of bonsai trees, nurture them, grow them, and then sell them for more. So it's kind of like a flipping type business. So yeah, flipping items is one of the oldest side hustles known to man. This one can be really good. I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next one on the list is going to be insect taxidermy. And insect taxidermy actually dates back thousands of years to the ancient Greeks and Egyptians. And what people do is they do some beautiful insect taxidermy, they mount it in some sort of like frame, and they're able to sell each one. So again, super random, there's a good amount of people out there making money from it. I'll give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be feng shui consultation. And feng shui is all about optimizing the energy 
of a living space. And this dates back over 3,000 years and originated in ancient China. And feng shui consultants typically charge between $100 and $500 per session. And according to the website JobMonkey, feng shui masters earn between $20 and $60,000 per year. So yeah, this is another super random one. If you're someone who really likes interior design and specifically doing it in a feng shui way, this could be a really good one for you. I'll give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next one on the list is going to be game coaching. So this could be any number of different things from video games to chess. Chess, for instance, absolutely took off in the last three years ever since the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit came out. And there are people like Gotham Chess that are making millions of dollars a year educating and entertaining people on the game of chess. But it's not just chess, you can make money as a professional video game coach as well. So there's a pretty cool article on NBC about Natasha Amber, who's making about $3,000 a month as a professional video game coach. And she teaches people how to get better at the game Apex Legends. And according to ZipRecruiter, the average hourly pay for a video game coach is about $20.35 an hour. But if you do it on a part-time basis, you'll probably make between $20 and $50 an hour. So overall, there can be a lot of opportunity here. Of course, you have to be very, very good at whatever video game you're playing. But I'll give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next on the list is going to be hand-lettered wedding invitations. And this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a wedding invitation that is handwritten. And this is something that dates back to the Middle Ages where monks painstakingly hand-wrote wedding invitations for massive royal weddings. And calligraphers typically earn between two and $10 per invitation, or they typically do packages that will range from $100 to $300 per day. So yeah, if you're someone who has really good handwriting and you like doing handwritten letters, this could be a great opportunity for you. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be boosting services. And this is basically a side hustle where skilled video game players will help other video game players achieve certain things that they want. And typically this is going to be a higher rank or some type of accomplishment within a video game. And it's kind of like having a personal trainer for your video game avatar. Now boosting is allowed in certain cases and in certain video games. And in some cases it's actually not allowed. So definitely make sure you do your research on that. And there's a legendary League of Legends Legends player named Rez who would make over $200 per hour boosting and would usually make $1,000 a day. But boosters typically earn between $10 and $50 per hour. So yeah, again, it's another one where you have to be very good at a video game and also just very familiar with it, but it can be a good opportunity. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be game item farming. Now this one really resonates with me because when I was young, I kind of started my first business on RuneScape. And basically I started it off by mining iron and ore and then I started selling it. After I'd gotten enough money, I started buying iron and ore from other players and then selling it in bulk to rich players who were trying to level up their smithing skill. And I ended up getting ridiculously rich on RuneScape by doing this. I made hundreds of millions of dollars as an iron and ore merchant. And then I ended up selling some of the GP or gold coins that I made within the game to friends in real life for cold hard cash. And there's many different ways you can do this on lots of different popular video games. Now, to be fair, a lot of them are sketchy and involve bots, which is typically going to be against the game's terms of service. So if you get caught, you're likely going to get kicked out. But there are some types of farming that don't involve bots and it's basically just manual. And you can make really good money doing it, especially if you get really good at making money in the game. So yeah, can be a pretty good opportunity. I'll give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score as well. But the truth is most of the really good side hustles out there are not going to be great for lazy people or people who just want to have fun. Unfortunately, that's just not how the world works usually. And typically you are going to have to work very hard no matter what you do. So if you want to see a video where I name some of the absolute best side hustles you can do, you can check that out by clicking right here.